Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is where things get slightly more difficult for me now as the British Superbike race season is fast approaching. I've got six races over the next 12 weekends. So every other weekend I'll be at a racetrack and that means I've now got to be a little bit smarter in the way that I film my YouTube videos and then schedule them to upload whilst I'm at a racetrack. So as we're approaching the first round, I thought it'd be quite cool to take you through all of the kit that I take with me on a race weekend, my helmets, my leathers, my boots. I'll reveal my new helmet for 2020 and all the other little things I take in my kit bag as well. I've also got a little bit of a secret that I'll let you in on later on in the video. And for now, I'll nip down to the garage, get my kit out and show you exactly what I take with me. So I'm very fortunate and lucky that I get to wear some of the best kit on the market. I take three helmets with me on a race weekend, three suits as well. BSB is not an easy championship and the tracks are quite difficult to ride on as well. So there's always the risk of crashing. So you need to be prepared for that. This is my design for the 2020 season. I'll put in some slow-mo footage that looks more spectacular than this right now. So these are the new helmet bags for this year from Showy. We've got a nice pocket on the side, which they didn't have last year, which is handy for taking your gloves to the garage. Then inside, I've got my helmet. This is my dry helmet with a dark visor on, and then the wet helmet with a clear visor on with the anti-fog insert. That has a clear film on that. You can see the smiley face. I don't know if you can see that smiley face here that's drawn on to remind you that there's a blue cover on the inside of that so you peel that off just before you ride. On the top, if I just spin this one, you can see that's actually the thistle that my dad used to wear on his helmets. It's worth noting on a weekend as well at BSB, rain is obviously always on the cards. So on a race weekend I typically have two helmets, one prepared for the dry and then this one will be prepared for the wet. That way you're always set, if it's just about to tip it down in the garage, you're, you know you can quickly chuck your wet helmet on, which is a good luxury to have. I then have the third helmet as a spare, so that's just sat in the camper van, just in case I have any accidents and I've got a backup helmet. For people that haven't worn a showy helmet before, I really like the visor system on them, they're really easy to use. Obviously slide up like that, and then all you have to do is pull that little tab down there, and then I can't really do this one handed, but if you pull that down, that pops off, it's as easy as that. And then you just do the reverse to put it back on. I can even do it one handed, I didn't think I'd be able to do that. So yeah, they're easy to use and that's also a lifesaver because there's been a few times on the grid in my racing career when there's been an emergency where you need to change your visor for whatever reason, you've either scratched it or it's not, or it's broken and you then are left with a mechanic that's never changed the visor before that has to quickly change the visor with 30 seconds to go and it's always a mad panic. So having a complicated visor system isn't recommended and these ones make that a lot easier that anyone can do that. I could probably even do that myself with my gloves on which most helmets you can't. The other little bits and pieces that I take with me on a race weekend that go in this side pocket my helmet bag are my gloves. These are the Spiddy Carbo One gloves got carbon knuckle protectors and they're just a good comfy glove. I also take a microfiber cloth in case I've used both the tear offs that are on my visor in the session and I need to clean my helmet quickly as I've come in the pits I have a cloth with me and then plenty of earplugs because super bikes are pretty noisy now so definitely need to wear earplugs as well. At some point I think I'm going to invest in a tripod for this camera because I realised I filmed most of this video from behind the camera which you then can't hear me. Now I'm filming it in front of the camera and every time I film my face I miss everything that I'm trying to film in the background and then when I film the stuff in the background I miss my face. I'm learning, I promise. So after the helmet we move on to my main kit bag. This is what I carry all the other little bits in. So in the end pocket I take my undersuits with me. These are just normal undersuit skins. Six pairs of socks, I have to put a new pair of socks on for every session. The main pocket is where I keep my boots and back protector. 
So I wear city boots. I've worn these for three years now. Again, I'm really lucky to wear these. Some of the best riders in the world wear these boots and they're really comfy and super protective as well. So this is the leather suit I wear on a race weekend. It's made by Spiddy. At the start of the season, Synetic and Taz Racing and BMW, they'll all come together and create this design. It has the blue, white and red, obviously, of BMW, and then it's mainly blue for Synetic and Taz Racing. This suit is an airbag suit, so you can see here there's some extra stretch panels. That's if the airbag goes off, then that will stretch effectively and let the airbag swell up inside the suit. So the way most riders contracts will work is that the majority of the sponsors on the suit are the team sponsors and then you'll get a selection of your own personal sponsors on there. These two are my personal sponsors, Captain Cover and Digitally Charged and then I have my helmet sponsor Showy on there as well. That's how most riders suits will work. There's obviously more sponsors on the arms, sometimes they'll be the rider sponsors, sometimes they'll be the team sponsors. My team, Taz Racing, are obviously very fortunate. They've got a lot of good sponsors and a lot of good companies that work with them. This year, the new title sponsor, Synetic, is on board. And yeah, really cool that they've come on board. So I'm very grateful for them for putting the money into the team. So if I spin the suit around, this is the back of the suit. Up here on the hump is where the airbag in my suit is. So the green and the red light signify whether it's got enough charge. Every night I have to charge that before I go out. On the elbows I have elbow sliders. In BSB, riders don't tend to get their elbow down that much. That's a combination of the tyres we use and the bikes that we ride. MotoGP, they obviously carry higher lean angles, so they're all on their elbow a lot more. As you don't get your elbow down as much with this suit, these are interchangeable, but you don't change them as much as your knee sliders, so they have a screw inside there that bolts in. So you can still swap those if you need. And then obviously on the knee slider, you've got protection there above the knee and then the knee slider itself as well. I can happily say that Spiddy knee sliders are never going to come off in a hurry. This Velcro they use is super strong, which is good when you're racing because the last thing you want is your knee slider to come off in the middle of a race. Then all the way throughout the suit, you can see these little holes here, they're ventilation, which you need less in England, but we are due a hot weekend at Donington, so I guess I will be needing that at the weekend which is all up the arms as well and in the forearms. I mentioned before about the stretch panel in it. This stretch panel is obviously really big here, which is nice because it gives the suit a lot of flexibility. It means you can get tucked in well and then hang off still on the corners. I hope you enjoyed looking at all my kit there. I need to say a big thank you to my personal sponsors as well as the sponsors that give me the kit because it would be impossible for me to go racing without them. So big thank you to them. I've also been keeping a little bit of a secret from you not only through this video, but through lockdown as well. Now, in the middle of lockdown, I actually broke my right leg in two places and tore my MCL ligament. At the time, it seemed pretty serious, so only my close friends and family knew about it and my race team. The next day after I'd seen the doctor, I was actually told that I wasn't going to be able to race this year at all, which was pretty frightening for me. I've never been in that position before. It was probably the worst injury in my career. And as a result of that, I was pretty depressed. And that is actually what sprung the idea for me to do these YouTube videos. It was something to keep my mind on. And I enjoyed making videos anyway. It was something I could do sat down. So that was originally why I didn't feature in the Mad Mark videos to start with, because I was just sat down videoing them. Now, Originally I was told it was nine months before I'd ride a bike again, which was going to lead into next year. And then I got some good news about a month after that. I went back to the doctor and it turned out I didn't need an operation and my right knee was on the mend. So I just got stuck right into my physio and all the training that I normally do in the gym. I was stuck in a leg brace for two months where my knee was locked solid basically until the MCL ligament had repaired. And after that, I slowly regained movement in it. I was told it'd be three months until I could ride a motorbike and we are now at two months. And I'm pleased to say that I actually managed to get out at the test the week before the first round, which was totally unexpected. I didn't think I'd be at the first two races, let alone the test beforehand. So I'm really pleased with my progress. And he said a big thank you to Loughborough University who have helped me through this injury and all my friends and family who kept my spirits up during lockdown and yeah that's what's launched this YouTube channel 
it's meant that I'll carry on doing the videos because I've really got into doing them now. And unfortunately it means I'm not at 100% fitness for this first race, but I'll be out there trying my best as always. And hopefully over this weekend, my knee will gradually gain a bit more movement back. I'll get some of the strength back in my leg and I'll be back to full fitness before I know it, hopefully. So you're probably watching this on Sunday of the British Superbike race weekend at Donington. I've no idea how I'm going to do, but I'll be trying my best and that's all you can do sometimes. So I look forward to coming back next weekend with another video. I've got more Mad Mart planned as well as some more Mac Chats planned. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll be back very soon. Bye for now.